What's up, y'all? My name is Daniel. I am one half of the Heart and Fight team. I will be without my co-host Omar for this segment. If you're not familiar with our content, we have historically profiled fighters and broken down UFC and Bellator events. We have added a new element to our content, which is Street Beast Fight Breakdowns, where I will be identifying some of the strengths that each fighter brings, but also pointing out the X factor that might play a major role in the fight. My intentions are not to predict the outcome. The fighters will be able to do that for themselves. Now, my goal is to help point out those strengths of each fighter so that you can appreciate the skills and talent they bring to the cage. With that said, we're going to go with this Street Beefs fight breakdown, and it's going to be on November 7th at the Main Street Beefs in Virginia, and it's going to be a championship fight. Daddy the Puncher versus the champion, Reckless Rico. Now let's take a closer look at Daddy the Puncher and his weapons of choice. Weapon number one, calf kicks, which is a new addition to his offense. If you look at his earlier fights, he didn't throw much kicks at all. It wasn't until recently he began to use it, and he uses it like a boxer uses a jab. It's to disrupt forward momentum from fighters. It's effective because they impact nerves that run through the legs. Because they're so low, it makes it difficult for wrestlers to catch. With the calf kick, you're out of range. And so Deddy, the puncher, uses the calf kick pretty effectively. Weapon number two. He is an escape artist. Deddy tends to load up his one-two punch, which leaves him available for takedowns. However, when he is taken down, which is practically in every single fight, he manages to escape danger. Even if he is mounted, he fights tooth and nail to get up. Doesn't accept being on his back. Daddy is always fighting to get back up. And in doing that, he often finds himself reversing the position and being on top. Then look at Daddy. Daddy gets right out of it. And this one, he's being pummeled against the fence and he magically escapes. They try to flip him over. But you see, there's something about him that he just manages to escape. It's nothing technical. There's certainly something there that, is, that you can't see with the eye that allows him to escape. Like he's being choked, gets right out of it. He's just one of those people who has nine lives. He gets reversed, then he reverses right back. No matter what dire circumstance he's in, he always manages to get out and to be on top. Look at that, he even finishes with a flurry here. Weapon number three, his elbows. When Deddy does get on top, he uses his elbows to hurt his opponent, which is rare in street beefs. Many have been in those positions, but strike with their fists. He tries to pin your head down with his elbow, rises up and comes right back down with his elbow does elbows to the head and to the body. And you can see his opponent is hurt. Now let's go to the champion, Reckless Rico. Weapon number one, I call this transitional offense. Reckless Rico's striking offense is not built to stay on the outside and score or to avoid infighting, but rather it's designed to transition to the next phase of the fight. It's like a bridge. It's a passageway to make contact with his opponent. As you can see, his jabs, his punches, his footwork, his movements help him get closer to the opponent where he really wants the fight to be. Throws a left and then the right to clinch. He has a clinch, he's pushing so that he can level change. And then, as you're about to see in a second, take down. Weapon number two. When you watch his fights, one thing stands out for sure. That's his grip strength. When he grabs you, whether that's your neck or your body or any limb, he seems to have full control over them. No matter how hard someone tries to resist him, he seems to have the strength to hold whatever is in his grips for a long time or until someone taps. His grip is so strong that his opponents cannot escape. To a guillotine, forces his opponent to tap. Look at this one. Grabs a hold of the neck and the has the arm in, 
His opponent cannot shake him off. You can tell how strong his grip is right here when he's able to lean back. Look how long he holds this for. Even when he gets slammed, he's able to still hold on. Look at this, grabs the hips. His opponent is fighting it. He still can't escape it. When someone has that kind of a grip, chokes happen in split seconds. It's not like a gradual tension, it's immediate. Zero to 100. You can see his opponent said I was okay. Not anymore. Weapon number three, his top game. Depending what school or discipline you come from, this is also referred to as top pressure. Similarly to his grip strength, he knows how to position himself so that he, he can flatten you out when you're underneath him. Many have tried to roll from underneath him or tried reverses, but he knows how to maintain top control. He can make himself heavy, which is, isn't a skill that many folks have outside of trained wrestlers. He uses his legs to take away your base, which stabilizes him, and simultaneously takes away any movement that happens underneath him. And if you ever give up your back to him, you can forget about it. He is not coming off you. He's like a backpack. You're going to be wearing him the rest of the fight. No matter where his opponent rolls, he is right on top of him. When I think about the X Factor, it has to be grappling. Daddy the Puncher gets taken down in every single fight that he has been in in Street Beefs. But like I've said before, because he knows how to escape, he gets out of those really dangerous positions. And we know that Reckless Rico loves taking his opponents to the ground. Outside of his one boxing match, all his fights have hit the ground. Can Daddy the Puncher escape Reckless Rico's grip? Can he break it? Is he able to get him off him and in reverse position so that he can be on top and rain down those elbows? Can Daddy the Puncher utilize his leg kicks to keep Reckless Rico away from his body and away from clinching? Although I didn't point this out, Reckless Rico actually has really good leg defense. Because Reckless Rico is so good at avoiding kicks and punches, he might take that weapon away from Daddy the Puncher. And so it will become a grappling match. They're not afraid to grapple. They're not afraid of the ground. They're not afraid to be in any position because they're always there. They're familiar with it. And so the key to this grappling exchange will be who gets top control. Whoever can attain top control in the ground game will determine the fight because both these fighters do a lot of damage when they're on top of their opponents. So this will be a test of grappling. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you were able to gather something from this breakdown. If you like what you saw, like what you heard, please subscribe to the channel. We have merchandise. You can go to our Teespring store. I will leave a link at the bottom where you can buy Heart in the Fight Shinigami t-shirts and apparel. And we always appreciate all the support that we can get. So if you'd like to donate, we have a Patreon page. And to the next time we see each other, dig deep and double down on your own commitments to your life.